So did you know that both Bash and ZSH actually have a Vi mode? So this means you can use Vim keys to move around within your shell. So they're very similar, so I thought I'll just move them into one video and then talk about the differences when I actually get to them. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do and let's get started. Good morning everyone and welcome back to the channel. So we're going to start up with the ZSH version because that's just what I'm running right now and then I will briefly talk about the differences when they come up when I get to any of them with Bash. So the first thing you're going to want to do if you're using ZSH to actually, you know, activate it is to go into your ZSH RC. I'll explain how to do the Bash RC in just a moment. I won't save that till late in the video. And what we want to do in here, if we go down to where I've got, where is Vi? Okay. So there's two lines in here that you're going to want to have. So the first thing is run bind key dash V. That'll actually activate via mode. And then you want to actually put in export key timeout equals one. So there are some slight bugs when you actually activate via mode. There's things like the um, autofill list just won't load properly unless you change what the key timeout is. This is what the recommended key timeout is. So just do this and then it'll actually function like it should be. So if you want to do the same thing on Bash, the way you go about doing that, we check out our Bash RC. It's very similar. The line you want to add is set-o vi, and this will actually activate vi mode. So they're both very similar to activate. They're both very simple to activate. So what can we actually do with this? So if I just put in some test text in here, put in some brackets so we can test that out, put in some quotes so we can test out that as well, Okay, so I'll just wait for that to clear up and then we can actually test some stuff. So you can switch between insert mode and normal mode or command mode, whatever you want to call it, with I and obviously you can press escape to jump out or you have the option of pressing A depending on where you actually want to start typing from. You can also do things like say press capital I to go to the start of the line and start typing or press capital A and go to the end of the line and start typing. So you can move around with H and J. I don't believe... Uh, H and L, sorry. J and K will do different things depending on how you've got your shell configured. Right now, for me, K is going to go up through my history. I think that's the default behavior as well, so it's probably going to do that. So K will go up in history, J will go down in history. And you can move left and right with H and L, obviously. So a lot of the Vim movement has been slightly modified to make sense with Vi mode, or it's just completely missing. So you can jump to the start of a line with zero, you can jump to the end of a line with the dollar sign, so like you'd normally expect. So things like, say for example, if we go capital G, that'll actually jump us to the start of the line, rather than, I think that would jump you to the end of the file, if I remember correctly, if I'm not entirely mistaken. If we go into Vim, I write some stuff out. See, I'm not very gr uh, good at Vim, but if we go right to the start, yeah, capital G, it actually does the opposite. Now, I don't know why. I, I can't imagine any reason why you would want to just completely, I don't know, make the meaning of it backwards, but some of the things just haven't been replicated at all. So you can't do things like jump between paragraphs using, say, your brackets. Either of the brackets doesn't work, so that's a little annoying. I would have liked them to just jump to the start or the end, but that's fine that it's not really there. It doesn't actually need to be. So you can jump between words. We can go back with words like you'd expect in Vim, forward in words with W. Just like in normal Vim, if you have brackets or something, those actually count as a delimiter for the end of a word. So if we jump between those with B and W, those actually jump between back and forth. You can even do some like really weird stuff that... You wouldn't even expect them to even bother to include, but I'll get to that a bit later. So jumping between words with E also works. So that's similar to jumping with W, but it changes where you're actually jumping to. So we go back right to the start. So jumping with W will jump you to the start of the next word, whereas E will jump you to the end of the current word. So you can even jump around using a numbered amount. So say we want to do like, you want to go 11H or we want to do 5L. That'll jump us left and right with a actual numbered amount. So you can actually jump through your history like that as well. So if we go 10K, for example, that actually jumps up 10 up through our history. Obviously, that's not going to be too useful because you don't know what's 10 up unless you've been counting every command you run. But that is cool that it is there. 
So one of the biggest missing features is that you can't actually do in commands. So say we want to do something like change in brackets, that doesn't work. So you can't also do like delete in brackets either, or the same works for quotes, for example. So change in uh, quotes, delete in quotes. That also doesn't work. So that's a little annoying. I would like that. Obviously you can open a Vim buffer up to do that. With ZSH though, the Vim buffer, you have to actually configure yourself. Bash, you have to just press V. And that's where one of the biggest differences between Bash and ZSH's implementation of Vime mode come up. So in Bash, you don't actually have a visual mode. Whereas in ZSH, to actually get into a Vim buffer, which is bound to V in the Bash version, you actually have to configure that up yourself. So I've got that bound to control V, I think. So I have to be in insert mode to run that. And then that actually brings us up into a Vim buffer. So we can do things like changing quotes and like delete in brackets then. Another thing unlike Bash is when you actually save this, it doesn't automatically run it, which is nice. Sometimes you may want it to do that, but generally it's probably safer just to not run it. So because you have a visual mode, a lot of the visual stuff is also supported. So let's say you want to do like select up to a word in visual mode, or you want to do a visual line or various other things like say you want to do, I don't know, select these characters and then go capitalize them, for example, you can do that. And that's another thing that I wasn't even expecting to be here. So I've accidentally done capitalization a bunch of times and I didn't realize what the keys were until fairly recently, but it's actually kind of cool that it is there. So say you want to do like V select this word and then do capitalize that. And I don't know, you want to capitalize everything. So we go like G U G and that'll capitalize the entire line or you can capitalize from here to the start of the line or from here to the end of the line. You're probably not going to use the capitalization command very often. And I don't use it typically in Vim anyway, because as I said, I didn't realize it was there. I've just accidentally hit it a couple of times, but it is nice for it to be there because that's just a feature that's not very common. And I don't know, it's just cool that it's there. I don't know particularly why they bothered. I don't actually know how the implementation is set up for this. They might just be like running a Vi buffer in the background or something, but it is nice that it's there. So we also have the ability to do undos and redos. So if I just add some stuff in here, we go undo with U and we can do redo with control R. So that's all nice there. You can do other things like delete characters with X. You can delete the entire line you can delete the entire line with capital S. I can't remember what capital S does in regular Vim, but in Vi mode, it's just going to delete the entire line. So I think that's a lot of the stuff that I care about. So obviously there's a ton more stuff you can do. I'm not great with Vim though. This is the sort of commands that I use on a regular basis. There's probably a ton of other stuff that is actually supported that if you want to dig through, you could probably find and most of the Vi stuff is supported. It might be slightly different, but it is nice that it's there. So as I said, if you want to go into visual mode, you have to configure that yourself. So I've got that to control V. So I'll just show you how to do that. And then I'll show you just some of the neat little extra stuff you can do to actually just make it easier to work with Vi mode within ZSH. That is the wrong file I opened. Cool. So v.zshrc. Okay, so the thing that we're going to want to change in here is this line right here. So if you add these two lines, then you'll be able to actually enter into a Vim buffer with a command that you set up. So I've got this bound in here to control V. Obviously, you can bind this to anything that you want, but control V is just a nice thing to have there. So I think because of that, though, I also lose visual, what is it called? Visual, visual block. I'm not sure if visual blocks actually supported by default because I've got a key overlapping it to begin with, but I don't see any reason why you'd ever use visual block because on a single line, visual block is effectively the same as regular visual mode. So as I was saying before, before I got off track, these two lines in here will actually let you enter in a Vim buffer. Now, the other thing that you might want to do is this right here. So by default in ZSH, so if we just write out say LS and we want to autofill, by default the way that ZSH works is you actually have to tab through this and you don't want to do that, that's dumb. 
So what you want to do instead is add these four lines right in here. You don't need the second four. The second four are just there in case my fingers happen to be above the arrow keys. So what these will let you do is actually navigate through this list with your Vim keys instead of having to use tab. So that just basically lets you move around like this. There's nothing too special about that. I've shown it before, but it is nice to have it there. Now this next line in here is another thing to actually fix a bug that happens with ZSH. So by default, I actually have no idea why it happens, but if you were to type some stuff out, go back into normal mode and then go back into insert mode, you wouldn't actually be able to backspace. I think that escape isn't mapped properly and then it just tries to use that as a key combo or something, but adding this line right in here will actually let you use backspace to delete characters. Obviously, this isn't normal Vi behavior to begin with. This is more close to how Vim behaves, but I'm not a Vi user, I'm a Vim user, and I want it to behave like Vim does. And this last block down here, so I'll just bring that up full screen. This block in here will basically change my cursor that I'm using within my shell. So if you noticed, when I'm switching between the different modes, I'm actually changing my cursor and that's not actually default behavior. So to do that, you just have to basically copy in this function and then run it directly under it. So I honestly can't explain this. I copied this from Luke Smith, but it just works basically. And then the next two things you might want to care about, the next three or so things, just these lines right here. So this will basically make sure that your cursor gets initialized to being a beam like it is right here. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to cover for Vi mode. So as I was saying earlier, the bash implementation is slightly inferior just because it's missing a visual mode and also because it'll automatically actually run commands if you do open them up in a vim buffer. So personally, I prefer the ZSH implementation, but for everything else, they seem like they are basically identical. So really, if you're in bash or if you're in ZSH, I would highly recommend using Vi mode if you're a vim user because it does make it a bit easier. Even if I'm not great at vim, even if I'm just jumping between words, I still think it's a bit easier. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. So if you like this video, remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below letting me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm aiming for a thousand subs and any help would be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in. So go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got all of my alternate platforms. So if you want to see my videos on a platform that isn't YouTube, go check that out. Library right now is still the focus, but there are a couple others. I've also got my support links down below, so if you'd like to support the channel, go check that out and any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I have got my social links. So if you want to chat with me on any platforms, then I've got like my Discord and a couple other places. So go check that out and I'm pretty active there, so feel free to send me a message and I'll get to it at some point. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, so I'm out.